Hi, and welcome to the masterclass, how to design a clothing line. In this masterclass, you'll learn how to create a cohesive collection that speaks your unique values and language. I know design. I have a BFA from Parsons School of Design from Paris and New York. I've worked in the industry for over 20 years as a clothing designer. I've worked for global brands and startups. I've created award-winning designs. I've run a design agency called Designer since 2007, and I've also run and started two own clothing brands. In this video, I'll share with you my experience and I will teach you how to design great products, why design language matters, what your designs should include, what to always consider in your designs, the essential building blocks of design, inspiration, how to create your unique design language, and how to integrate sustainability when designing. All right, so let's dive right in. And so why is a design language important? Why should you care? Why should you apply it? Well, because an apparel brand's design language is like a person's personality. It makes your brand unique. And this strengthens your brand and it keeps it cohesive for customers to recognize you wherever you are, online, physical, it does not matter. It will also help you attract new customers who can identify and relate with your brand. And it also helps you stay consistent season after season, year after year. And why does it matter? Because your design make up your brand and your brand is your design because your design is your product eventually. And great design can actually empower people and they can help them feel better and it can help them, you know, feel a certain way. And great design improves people's lifestyle and well-being. And it also becomes a part of people's personalities. They, I mean, we know, and I know from the brands that I've worked with, some customers, I know they buy stuff from the same brand like 20 years in a row because they know what that brand stands for and they want to connect. They, they, they have a, a relationship with that, that brand. And so it's become a part of who they are. And this is extremely powerful. And it all starts with you. Again, if you're the designer, if you're the founder, it does not matter because even if you're not a designer, I mean, you still have to brief a designer. And since this design is so connected to your brand, again, it starts with you and with your values and with what you are doing. So what do you like? and why. And I would also recommend that you make a list of these things and take note and also make sure that you have them in front of you because this will dictate later on your actual design. What do you not like and why? What garments do you have in your closet? Look around. What does it look like? Is it minimalistic pieces? Is it only black? Is it only white? Is it super crazy colors and fun pieces? Look what you have and look at what you get attracted to. And what brands do you admire and shop from and why? I mean, look at what attracts you to them. What taste and what vibe do you like? And again, why do you like that? Try to recognize why you constantly uh, get attached to that. And also what attitude do you like and why? Because clothes are such a big part of also like your vibe and the attitude and also how you want to feel. And again, what makes that? just try to to feel and try to put words to it and i recommend that you do this for both brands and also for specific products and that yeah that you try to see similarities and that you try to see some patterns because this again will dictate later on when you design your collection and most of the time your own style is very attached to your collection into your brand. And it should be like that because a brand is like a, like a, a, an extension of you. And it's, it's a good thing. It should be like that. And 
after you've answered all those questions and you've put it down on paper, you need to make it visual. So write it down specifically, make lists with why you like it, what you like it, what you don't like, and also make it visual. Put it where you can see it in either a mood board or create a keynote and just try to keep it as organized as possible. Because of course, this will, will evolve with you and with the season as well with the trends, et cetera. So you need to make sure that you can have it somewhere where you can still add to it, but at the same time, it will be there and it will be a collection and you have done it in an organized manner. And also, again, you should use this as a checklist for every collection and product that you create from now. And does this match with your target customer? Whatever you do and whatever you decide here should always go back to who your target customer is and what their values are and what they, you know, what do they like? Because of course you have a communication with them. And so do they like what you're trying to do? Are they on board with your, your collections, with your designs? Are they asking you for something else or are they like, yes, this is the best thing ever. And this will be a vital tool for when you grow your brand, for when you outsource work to other people that don't know anything about you or your brand. And also when you collaborate with other designers or other brands as well. And when you bring new team members on board. So again, see this as a very, uh, how should I say, important document. And today we are not going to talk about trends. I don't know if you've expected uh, me talking about any trends, but we're not going to go into trends today. We're going to talk about clothing and just from a design perspective, not trends. Yes, trends come and go and you should always uh, think about them and you should always be aware of them. But today we're only going to talk about well-designed, well-crafted products. And yes, fashion is time and your designs should reflect the time that we live in now. And it is natural that everything is uh, going to evolve. And oh, you grow as a person, you will grow as an entrepreneur, as a designer, designer. And so all these aspects will reflect your brand and your products. This is good. This is okay. And as the sentence here says, you will subconsciously follow and integrate trends in your designs and that's okay. And also design language would also reflect what is happening in the world. And this is also a good thing because you connect with people through that. And people will recognize what's happened and they will feel if you all of a sudden don't recognize like what's, what's going on now with Corona and the craziness of, of this entire year. If you just don't talk about it or if you don't let it reflect your, maybe your mood, maybe your designs, maybe how you communicate, people are just going to feel alienated and they will not connect with you. So. The starting point should always be your customer. And so you've nailed your target customer, you know exactly who this person is, maybe you have two or three per different avatars, and this is good. But again, when you design your products, you should think about where your customer is going in your products. What is your customer doing in your products? And how do you want your customer to feel in your products? How is your product empowering, strengthening, or improving your customer's life? If you could later when you've designed your products, if you could think back to these questions and even now, like in the starting phase, if you can see every single product that you put in your collection, if you can check them against these questions, you will have a much higher rate of accuracy of connecting these products to your customers and their lives. And it's kind of important because you don't wanna just put out products that are like, yeah, whatever, I find this cute. And so I hope my customers are gonna do that as well. That's not really a good strategy. You want to know that every single piece of your collection is going to have a purpose and is going to connect and get some sort of an attachment to your customer and that they will want to have those products immediately when they see them. 
And so Steve Jobs says, design is not just what it looks like and feels like, design is how it works. And yes, totally. And this transcends into this slide because the product is eventually your business. If you have a shitty product and if your product is not working, if your product is had has a bad fit or if your product has a shitty material, people will not want to buy it. Or if they bought it, they're just going to leave it in the closet and they're not going to bother. They're just going to toss it or give it to second hand or whatever these are extremely important. And again, I think you should have them as checking points for whenever you decide your material, even your positioning in your collection structure, you should check them against these three points. And that's the visual. Is it great? Is it appealing? Is it fantastic looking? Is it interesting? Does it have some sort of an appeal? The hand feel people will touch it. it they will wear it. The, the fabric needs to be nice, needs to work, needs to, if you're wearing um, let's say again, if you're wearing a, a, an active wear product and that material is not comfortable, is not wicking, is not stretchy, that's going to be a problem for your customer. And again, if you have a bad fit and a horrible comfort in your products, people will not want to wear this garment a second time. So these three things are crucial for a good, um, for a good design. And in your designs, always consider, even in the this design phase, Think one step ahead. What fabrics and trims do you need? What sewing difficulties and machinery, for example, do you need to do you need to have for your products? Because these will dictate again what you will need, how you will need to manufacture, and what manufacturing facility do you need to produce it? Do they have the machinery? Are they even capable? Could they even do your product? Because yes, you can always design pretty things and you can, but is it realistic with the manufacturers that you have today? Is it realistic with the stock materials that you have today? You have to think, we always mention that. Of course, you need to think cleverly when it comes to your designs and your collection because you want to make a profit. You do not want to spend money on wasting uh, your money on materials or, you know, creating uh, designs that will not sell or that are not a good fit in your entire collection. We want you to think cleverly when you, when you design and put your products into the world. And here is where it gets interesting. These, this slide and the coming slide are going to be the most important part in this workshop. And these are the building blocks of every design. Whatever's on this slide and the next slide, you could do combinations of, you could create interesting designs, you can create, uh, ab select several of these building blocks to create something that's unique to you because now you've done the exercise of writing down what you like, what you don't like. Maybe again, as an example, maybe you want to, you're about all minimalistic design then that's specific for you. Then you're not going to go into super crazy prints and super crazy colors and super embellished products. That's going to, you're going to stay away from that. Or you're all about texture and embellishment and over the top silhouettes. That's you. So all these uh, building blocks, these, these words th here that you're going to see here and in the next slide, you can mix and mash them to create interesting collections, to create interesting designs, but also to make sure that you know what's you and what's not you. And of course, you can cycle like a DJ uh, board. You can, you know, volume it up or volume it down. You can, you can adjust and play around with these things. This is where also how you can see these building blocks in those styles. You can play around with it, and you can again like dial it up in the most iconic. You can, you can have max them out in different in different um, building blocks, or you can kind of dial it down and pick a couple of them for your core products or for your base products. So let's go through them here. 
you could play with attitude. Like what is the attitude that you want your product to exude? What's the feeling? That's a feeling and that's something you can you can either ump up or not have at all in one of your designs. You could have a focus point for a garment in a garment. Is it the sleeve? Is it the, the color? Is it the back? Is it the skirt itself? Is it the material? What do you want your focus point in that particular garment to be? Again, proportions. You can play with proportions or you can keep proportions. You can also play with proportions. Again, like in the picture, you could see the sleeves are bigger and then it's fairly short, the, the product. This also gives interest and it creates something, some, some appeal to the product. But also when you, I'm also talking about keeping proportions. This means that if you're playing too much with proportions and in several products it's it can be very how should i say disturbing for the eye when everything for example it's like super big it's just gonna look very strange but if you keep a proportion in only the a part of the product and then so you play with the sleeves but then you keep it narrow at the waist that gives some sort of an interest and it's not just like overwhelming also shape and volume what specific shape do you want to be known for is it something that's unique to you maybe you can play with that in several products and also when it comes to the volume do you want to have the volume at the top at the bottom at the back at the cuff where do you want to have it again this gives dimensionality to the product Line language, what I mean with line language is you will, as a designer, you will want to have either curved lines or angular lines. Personally, I hate curved lines. I almost never design with curved lines. If I do that, I always apply them at, for example, the, the corner of of a pocket or very something very like a small detail i never apply it into a cut line because i don't that's just not what i like and so that's my style that's my vibe what do you what is your line, line language some designers have super curvy lines and they always almost pl all the time play with with circular uh, circular lines that's their signature so again what do you want your signature to be and keep that cohesive you could also of course put it down into writing just state it like all my line language should be always curved or always straight or always when i meet when i have a, a line meeting that line meeting should be soft for example if you have a dart going into a seam maybe at the end of the dart maybe you're creating a slight curve for example that's what i mean so you need to be detailed with how you want to apply your lines because all of a sudden if you're if you're going to apply in one style you're going super curvy lines and then the other style you're going super angular that's going to look a bit schizo and it, you're not going to be cohesive you're not going to have a red thread so it's going to be very confusing for the eye as well so make sure that you follow that you again look at what you like and what your what your preferences are even with when you look at other designers work as well like what do you get attracted to N note that down you're going to work with depth and three-dimensionality. Again, you can exaggerate certain features and you can create depth by doing that in a style because a product, a garment is 3D. It's not flat. It's not just a front sketch or a back ske sketch. It's, it, it, it's a, a three-dimensional uh, product. So what do you want to... Also, when you want to see it from afar, 
from 10 meters, for example. Do you can you create depth in your product? Can you place the the seams, the side seams in a certain way to create, I don't know, maybe a narrower waist or a, a broader shoulder? Could you bring something, a pocket? Could you put make a pocket really big to pop? And then also you put something next to it so that's some slightly smaller. You could also play with depth when it comes to colors. You could have lighter colors at the front and darker colors at, at the bottom. Again, like if you would play with, if you layer them on top, you're going to, you're going to create a three-dimensional effect. And this is, creates interest, of course, but also it creates, again, if you think about the garment from a 3D perspective, it's going to make it pop and it's not going to be boring. And also you as the wearer, you, when you look yourself in the mirror, it's going to be like, it's, it's going to look cool. It's going to look fun and interesting. Drape, you can, of course, create a lot of movement and interest with drape. And you can have that, of course, with by patterning a certain pattern piece or by the material itself. And again, here you can play around with it by mixing different materials and also by maybe you want the drape in the back but not in the front. Maybe you want the drape on the sleeve or on the collar or even on the hood. Just as long as you know that you can play around with drape, this is going to, again, create some sort of an interest to the product. Function. If you're having a functional brand, then of course, function is key into every aspect, every element that has to do with your product. When it comes to the details, the materials, the fit, when it comes to your detail, the, the accessories and all the trims that you're having, everything needs to have a function. So this is a given. But also, if you have a fashion product, you can also create function with certain details that can be fun and that can also be as a surprise for the wearer. It can be a hidden pocket inside a pocket. Maybe that's zipped and all of a sudden you can put your phone in it, you won't lose it. Or you can put your key or your money in it, you won't lose it. Or you can create a cuff that you can roll up and you can attach and all of a sudden, wow, you have a short sleeve instead of a long sleeve. So you can play around even with function even if you have a fashion brand. Color is super important and color should never be static. But at the same time, color should always be attached to your brand and to your, your values. And to, again, when I mentioned that minimalistic brand, then, of course, your colors are not going to be super, cheap, super crazy. Or if you have a timeless uh, brand where you want your, your f products to last a very, very long time, then, of course, you will not introduce super trendy colors because you will know those be, will be out of fashion in six months. So you will think strategically about the colors that you introduce. But again here, if you want to play with colors, you can play with with bright, you can play with tonal, you can play with toned down. And also uh, if you, you can tie the color to, again, to give depth, to add three dimensionality, color is so powerful and it can say so much. And also think about it. I know some of you have your own unique color and this is really cool, then of course you need to make sure that you carry over that color and that you have a pinch of it in every single product because that's your signature and that's something good. It could be, um, let's say, a little binding inside of the color that you carry over through all your products that's in that in your unique color or it can be the inside of the cuff or the inside of your waist at the pants it could be in the stitching when you stitch down your neck label for example it can be created in many interesting ways but at the same time this is your unique color that you want to transcend through everything that you do 
deconstruction. This one's fun. Uh, and what you can do with deconst deconstruction is that you can create something new out of something old. Let's say you have one core product that's super, that sells really well, that's, you can take that and deconstruct it and create something new. But at the same time, keep to your uniqueness, keep to your story, keep to your core product, but you're creating something new. It could even be a marketing product. It doesn't matter. You could just make it one off. It does not matter. At least you can play with the construction to create something new and interesting with your existing products. Or also with, you can even make an entire collection with this concept, with the deconstruction concept. And again, as it says at the bottom of this slide, many elements can be used at the same time and you can play with them. See this as a DJ uh, do you call it like DJ? What do you call it? Like a DJ board? DJ? What's that it's called? Like the 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 play board? Or whatever yeah, you could add, jockey board. I don't yeah, know. like you can add mixer board. Mixer board, exactly. Mixer board. Like you could add more or less, and just play around with it and see what you create. And we are continuing wing with the building blocks. You can play with texture and this is so much fun. Uh, we have a brand that we've worked with that they are only working with textured materials and it's so unique and so fun. And you know from like, 100 meters away that it's their product because the way they put textures together is so completely unique to them. But at the same time, again, think about an outfit. If you don't have texture, if everything would be like plain, blah, boring, uh, it's not going to add any interest to it. And it won't add any layers. And it won't add any... Uh, you won't be able to build a collection if you're using the same textures. So you need to think ahead, even when you're choosing your materials, what textures can you bring in to give that three-dimensionality and to give that interest. And also think about now everything is about online, everything is about social media, how much greater are pictures with texturized materials? They're a hundred times better because you can see that it's interesting. And think about even like a room, if you just take interior design, if everything is just like wood and concrete, that's just boring. But all of a sudden, if you throw in a, a, a super fluffy carpet and fun uh, pillows, and nice, you know, curtains, all of a sudden it gives interest. And this is the same with your collection and with your styles. And again, you can have, you can even play with layers. Like you have, you can have a material that's super flat. You can have another material that has big holes in it or like, um, like a big mesh, or you could have, you know, another one, maybe a pile of material that gives super much depth. Just think about these things and also put them layer on layer. And when you go to fairs, you can also change check them against each other and see what they can, you know, create together. Contrast is super important. And this also ties in, of course, to the texture because everything that's contrast creates interest and also strengthens the visual effect. And here you can also play with shine versus matte. And you can go into details here. If you have, let's say, a jacket and your material is matte, maybe you can add a super shiny zipper. Or on a shirt, maybe you have a crazy, or on a, on a dress, maybe you have a crazy shiny fabric, then of course, maybe you need to tone it down. You can't just go bling, bling a thousand because that's just gonna be woo, a bit crazy. So maybe you can tone down the the trims a little bit and just have them as uh, with a matte finish just again to create depth and, and interest symmetry and asymmetry you can play with this so much as well but again why i i, I wrote decide and use it thoughtfully here is because symmetry is has to do with balance and symmetry has to do with also with proportions but if you're 
everything that you're creating, all your design lines, all your details are placed on the garment symmetrically. And all of a sudden you have one style that's cut up completely asymmetric. That's going to feel super weird. So you either want to go for symmetry or a symmetry or place a small, small amount of asymmetry in your products, but it will keep your collection cohesive. It could be the cut of a pocket, or it could be one button that stands out that's slightly wonky, or it could be the seam at the back on every single product that's off, that's to a certain angle. That's fine because then you will have, this will be your connecting thread. But if you just go some symmetrical, the others are, let's create, you know, do a crazy seam here that's in a, a fun, you know, like neckline, that's just going to be odd. So either do it, or don't, or do a small portion everywhere, or do it, go full on, but do it everywhere. Transparency. This is fun because, again, it can create dimension in a garment, and also you can, it has to do with a feeling and a vibe. So you can either have portions of a garment, you can even have a, an entire top, let's say, in a transparent fabric. That's super cool. But then you can take this and you can layer it with another one and all of a sudden you've created something unique. Or you have a material piece on the product that's transparent. This again is going to create interest. So it gives you so many different options to a design and it creates uh, also, it makes it more fun when you put the different garments together into your collections. You could create you will be able to create so many different outfits because you will be able to layer them up. And this is where layering comes in. And you could, when layering, of course, you can layer different garments on top of each other, or also you can create, imagine if you play with different, let's say you have a transparent fabric and you have that in three different colors and you layer them on top. How cool would that be? And also, let's say if you have your a sleeve where you would have the longest, uh, the the darkest color that's going to be the longest, and then you layer a second color that's going to be slightly lighter, but you make that slightly shorter, and then you create a third layer of fabric on top, and that's gonna you're going to cut that even shorter. So you will have both an interest and a flow and a depth to your garment that's going to be a lot of fun. So transparency and layering kind of goes hand in hand as well. And also if you think about the products that you create, if you could layer them on top, and this is also where you should think about the fit, because if you're creating a tank top, of course, and then a long sleeve, uh, long sleeve t-shirt or even a hoodie, then you need to think about that, you know, the cut and the length and the, the lengths and the widths that they kind of correlate to each other. Also, when you layer them together, if you have a functional and a, a, a performance brand, then this is even more important because the layering system has to do with functionality and with keeping the body warm. So you need to think about it from that perspective as well. But it, you need to make sure that if you're cutting your, or maybe that's going to be intentional, let's say back to the tank top uh, and your hoodie. Let's, let's take a tank top and a hoodie um, example. If you cut the tank top super long and then you cut your the fit of your hoodie fairly short, then your tank is going to be, and you put them on top of each other, then the tank is going to be longer. But maybe that's the effect you want. At least think about it. Or if you think about it and you want to make it intentional, don't just make a two centimeter difference. Create the bigger difference. So at least it creates some effect. So it doesn't look like, oh, oops, that looks a bit short. Oh, it looks that it's not intentional, but it's wrong. Oh, oh. So either you want to do it and you want to exaggerate and make on purpose or you don't because you've thought about it and you've made a decision. Okay, where was I? Embellishment. So here embellishment can be 
extremely fun. It can be, it can add a lot of interest to a garment, but also at the same time, it can take away from a garment. Here you need to think about the entire, this kind of ties back to your values, to what type of brand you're about. If you're um, uh, embellishments, if you have a lot of, you know, stones and a lot of that stuff, it's very hard to clean a product. If you may uh, then make sure you have embellishments that at least can be easy to care for, for example, uh, but embellishments can be, or that you can put them or add them on a garment that they can be taken away from the garment when the product, so it's kind of multifunctional or versatile. At least you can, again, here, you can dial it up or you can dial it down. You should not just throw embellishment on a piece of garment and then you're like tossing it all out and everything because it's going to look very strange. Uh, so you want to do it purposefully and you want to do it in some aspects pretty carefully but at the same time it should speak to your to your unique uh, design aspect and what you're trying to to create again like if you're a minimalistic brand you're not going to want to crazy embellish your products but if you're a maxed out you know super uh, over the top design and style and a lot of colors and prints and all that then embellishment is going to look fantastic so it totally depends on on your your point of view print uh the print again it can be dialed up it can be dialed down but make sure it's your version and make sure the print speaks who you are and it's in the same vibe it should be inspirational and it can be inspirational for one specific style and one specific collection but at the same time again think about what you're about and make sure that it's cohesive season after season i'm not saying that you should take the exact same print not at all but it should at least the customer should recognize themselves in your prints and in what you're trying to say with the prints and this is the same with patterns they can be super crazy they can be toned down make sure and again these the the amount that you're making should also be in correlation with your the styles, if they're your icon pieces that are super over the top or like crazy, you know, eye catchers, or if you're, and of course, the more basic a product is, the more uh, not so crazy a product or a print or it's going to be. And movement. Movement is very important depending on what type of brand you are. We, I know that we have... Uh, brands in our community that are about dance and flow and movement and then of course this is crazy important for your styles because if a person when the person moves that's going to enhance their movement so everything that dingles that you know fringes uh flowy fabrics volume all that is going to catch or even the shine that's going to catch the light is going to create is going to maximize the movement and this is important but again you don't want to add this everywhere because again, like, where's the eye going to look? So you either do it intentionally in parts of it or in the front or in the back or only the sleeves. It can be, you know, if you have, you don't want to over throw a product with movement because then that's going to be a bit strange. Uh, but it can be, movement can be everything for a garment and especially if it's these type of products that are a bit like showstoppers or that have to do something with dance or a red carpet or something where a person you know walks up or walks down it's this is what's going to have the the audience kind of like gasp or even the person that's wearing it feel like an that that the movement is almost like an extension of their of their body and negative space and shape this can also this has to do with three-dimensionality as well you can think about it in when you can play with it when it comes to colors or you can play with it when it comes to the patterns as well but also you can play with it when it comes to 
uh, maybe even parts of the of the product. For example, you see this in a lot of dresses and a lot of tops where, for example, the front is done in white and then the sides, for example, are done in black or in a darker color. This creates the vision that the body or the person that's wearing it is much thinner or has a much narrow waist. And it's the same thing with certain pants where the sides or you add like you have another color or the seam goes towards the front. This gives the impression that the thigh is a bit narrow. So you can play a little bit with negative and positive space and with shapes as well to create certain impressions about the body or something that you want to enhance. It can be the shoulder, it can be like a broader shoulder, a stronger back, or it can be a narrow waist, or it can be um rounder hip for example again if you do a creative with movement and if you have you know other added volume this can be fantastic this can be extremely powerful so it's something to play with and in these building blocks as well you can again you can play around with however many elements that you want and to use them more or less in your designs and whenever you've created your entire collection and you've put your designs down and you kind of know what you want to create, again, this is, I mean, you've heard me talk about this and heard us talk about this before. Like, can we spot your product for, from afar? Do we know that it's you? If not, how can we do it? What can you create? Can you have a certain detail? Can you have a certain pattern? Can you have a certain shape that's completely unique to you? What do you know? I know also that some people in our community, they have a special shape of... Um, uh, over the shoulder, like they have a super specific cut over their shoulder. That's completely unique to them. What's your unique shape? What's your unique style and design element that nobody else has? If you don't have it, search for it, play around, look in the market, see what's there, what other twist can you make to create your own. And again, look back into the other uh, building blocks that I mentioned see what you can what you can pick from there what mixture can you make to create your own the inspiration your inspiration can change with a season and with a collection and it should be different it, because again it should evolve with you with your with the time with the fashion with everything but there should always be a red thread and consistent see throughout everything you do and it should always be there according to your values and your why that's why you're always nagging about your why and that you need to know your values because every design aspect should connect back to that and should be kind of checked and ticked off based on your values and your why and again after designing if you have too many crazy things going on if you know that you have too many pieces maybe some are not obvious for you and your collection they don't enhance your collection and strengthen the collection take them away or save them for later it's better to have a super strong design language and cohesive in the few pieces that you have then if you can create like 20 pieces that you know like oh maybe five kind of look similar and you're like oh um, they're a bit all over the place but hey whatever maybe someone's gonna buy them no you want to have a strong collection and a strong design so again, what is needed for the collection, keep that in and have a clear purpose for every single style in your collection. And your design language, it should not only be applied in, in the lines and the color and all that we've talked about, it should not only be applied in your designs and in your styles, it should run through and tie back to your logo, your typography, your imagery, meaning your graphics and your photos. It should tie back into everything digital, your website, your social media. It should be cohesive to your color palette because I'm sure you have a certain color palette for your branding. This should not completely um, kind of go against the grain to the colors that you have in your collection. 
and your packaging and your point of sales materials. It should all be cohesive. And yes, you can evolve it and you can tweak it, but do not make, do not confuse the customer by kind of having a super romantic typography. And then all of a sudden you have super architectural, minimalistic kind of futuristic designs. That's going to be very weird. And I know that many of you also have sustainable brands. So now I'm going to go through a couple of slides. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five slides that are going to touch only on sustainability and design language. And sustainability is going to be very tightly connected because your design language uh, is and your because your choices in the design are gonna affect your sustainability uh, and your your business and all the choices that you're making and materials and then if the products are gonna be able to be recycled and all and all that so sustainability is very specific and very unique. So if you don't have a sustainable brand, but you might want to have in the future, you, I think you should still, you know, keep close um, focus on this because at least you will know what it takes and you will know what to think about and what's, what's coming. Because when it comes to sustainability, 80% of a product's environmental impact is decided in the design stage. And this is because the biggest impact is done when it comes to material and when it comes to manufacturing. That's why your decisions in the design are so crucial. And your critical decisions are when it comes to functionality, when it comes to quality, when it comes to materials, which manufacturing uh, possibilities you need for your type of product, your product's life span, the afterlife of your product, what you want to, to do with it and what you intend, what you want your customer to do with it. And also it, it affects the recyclability of your product. And here are some points for your design and how you can affect sustainability and increase your sustainability in your design decisions. If you create a timeless design, of course, a timeless design is going to have your customer keep the product for longer. Meaning this is the most sustainable product that you will ever make. The more your customer, the longer they're going to use it, the better it's going to be for their environment. And now when you, when I'm going to go through these, you will understand how they relate to all the points that I talked about in previously. Also a well-functioning design. If you have a design and it's not really working, it's not really, uh, it's kind of working so and so, the hood is not really, the solution is pretty crappy, or you know, all the solutions that you apply, if they're not working perfectly, this is gonna affect the long-term usage of the product. And also, when you think about sustainability, a minimal seam construction is very important because seams are the weakest point in a garment. Seams are the, the place where, where products mostly break. And seams are also, most of the time, the material is the strongest when it's used entirely. But if you cut it up and if you add a seam, that's going to create, that's going to make the, the, the material uh, a bit weaker. So the more seams you have, the more problem areas you can have. The fewer seams you have and the better construction, the better this will be for your product. And the longer, the easier it will be later to recycle it, the easier it will be later to deconstruct it and recycle and repurpose it. Also an outstanding fit is crucial. Or if you do not want to have or if you think that, you know, a super tight fit, or if you cannot achieve an outstanding fit, maybe it's better to create the products slightly looser to kind of cheat a little bit with the construction 
uh, and to give the customer ease by having the product being a little bit loose instead of it being because when a product is snug, it need the fit needs to be aced. Because if the fit is not ace, the customer is not going to be able to to use it properly. And if you know, if you have functional garments, this is crucial because you do not want um, a strap to fall off. You do not want a desire for a cuff to get uncuffed when you climb, for example. You do not want the zippers to get undone. It's crucial. And a, a sustainable product should preferably have a multifunctional design or it should have a transformational design. The more ways you can use the design in, the better it is because you will be able to use that product in more ways and it's going to be more sustainable. And the customer needs to wear and to, to own fewer products instead of too many different products. And also think about minimizing waste. Some all the play with zero waste pattern cutting. This is very interesting. This means that the patterns that you're using is uh, using the entire width of a material, meaning that you will not waste any cutoffs from that material. It can be kind of hard to achieve, but it can be fun. At least I would recommend that you could play with the zero waste pattern cutting in a couple of styles because this was also give you a, a marketing story and it can be fun for you to, to talk about it. And also with a zero waste pattern cutting, you can create extremely architectural pieces. And this kind of ties back into volume that we've discussed. It ties back into movement and into interesting shapes. Ethical production, this goes without saying, of course, you need to think about the production and about the people that are going to create your products. Also, you can reduce the, you can design to reduce water, energy, and chemicals by picking uh materials that are not, that don't use any chemicals when they are dyed. And also that, you know, certain, you can pick certain uh, techniques that you know are better for nature when you select your materials and also when you select your manufacturers. Also designed for disassembly, products that can be taken apart by the end of the product life cycle. Uh, you, again, if you, I know this is very hard for sports where products because let's say, take for example a waterproof jacket waterproof jackets needs to be taped and a taped product is very difficult to take apart and then tape again because this destroys the material so again you need to think about all the components what can you do this that specific style is it can i design it to be taken apart if you can design it to be taken apart then maybe you know instead of having uh, for example, trims that are going to destroy the product. Maybe you can take and use, let's say instead of snaps, maybe you can use sew on buttons, for example, because these can be easily taken off or replaced if they break or, you know, and they don't ruin the material. While a snap punches a hole in the thing. So it's, it, of course, it's a lot to think about. I know, but these are some pointers for you to be at least be aware of. Think about repairing and secondhand services. Can you uh, offer a repair uh, service or can you partner up with a repair service or can you offer secondhand service for your products? You could even offer a secondhand option for your products and your customer to take back and you know that you will take care of the products and then you will resell them or create something new with them. This can be created as well and it's a part, it will be a part of your story. And Again, I mentioned this earlier to design for longevity because uh, the more, the longer you use the products, the better. And here, of course, the material, durable materials play a huge part. Cyclability, everything that you're picking, all these choices of trims and materials, can they be recycled? And 
try to design for closed loop manufacturing, meaning no waste and everything should be recycled and reused. And I know of a brand, they're called Rayburn, they're really cool, they're a streetwear brand, and from all their scraps, they're creating soft toys. It's a fun thing, It's um, it tells a story, and they are not wasting any materials. And here are some pointers for you uh, to when you've designed your products. Here are some garment standards and some questions that you can ask yourself for every single product that you've created. Does the product need to exist? Does it have a clear purpose? Is it a timeless design? What is the expected life cycle of the product? Is it a durable material in construction? Is the product made to last? Is it versatile? Can it be used, styled, or chained for several usages? Does it have high quality materials in manufacturing? Is the product made of quality materials and made with quality manufacturing? Will it age beautifully? I know many of you uh, are, have, you know, like jackets. Jackets can be used, or can, you can have a jacket for like 20 years. Does the material make a beautiful, long lasting, interesting transaction of your style through the ages? Jeans, you guys know, jeans age beautifully and they age to you, to your body. Does it age beautifully? Less is more. Take away from the product that is not needed because can you recycle it? It all ties back to that. Can you disassemble the product? Is it just too much? Is it too trendy? Also, it needs to be designed for easy care, preferably cold wash and no need for special treatments. If you're only creating your products for dry cleaning, that is a problem. When it comes to sustainability, that's a huge problem. How repairable is the product? How recyclable is the product? And also try to use technology to minimize sampling. You can work with manufacturing that work with clo 3D programs where you can visualize the product and the ace the patterning even before you start sewing. And also have a plan for leftover materials. Can you use them in other products? Can you create new products? Can you, I don't know, use the scraps in pockets or details or some create something fun with them? And think about, again, all the components in the entire product life cycle. About 95% of the textiles that are landfilled each year could be reused or recycled. That's kind of crazy. I know today we went through a lot, a lot of points and a lot of um, things to think about, but hopefully you've been able to get a grasp of the possibilities and the breadth of depth and width that you can create with your designs and with your collections. And I want to leave you with a couple of key takeaways. Consistency is key. Whatever you decide to do, Stick to, stick to that or deter a little bit from that, but always have something that ties back into your core design language, into your voice, into your unique way of doing things. And also stay true to your voice and uniqueness because this is what's going to keep the customers to come back and new customers to come to you. And yes, it is okay to evolve. Just do it gradually, not from season one collection to the other, because you will lose your customer and they will just get very confused. Yes, that was a lot. That was a mouthful. But it's fun because when you start working with this and when you start putting everything like you're starting to add all the components and play around with this. It can give you so much, so many possibilities with your collection. And also it can make it super clear because with whatever you've, whatever, whatever answers that you will have from these questions and whatever you decide here, you can, and you should do a brand book and you should put like line language. This is my line language prints. I only want to work with these type of prints. And then you visualize it. I do not want to work with these type of prints. And also if you create your own little brand book and your design language book or whatever you want to call it, your brand Bible, your design Bible, whatever you want to name it, you will know exactly what to do. And sometimes I know you can like, oh, all of a sudden you feel super inspired and you want to do all the things. 
But then you know that if you're checking back into your little brand guide or brand Bible, you're like, oh, maybe I'm kind of taking, you know, a bit too much on. I should tone it down a little bit to not confuse it. Or maybe I should just put that in one garment or two garments just to keep everything cohesive. So, yeah, uh, you should probably create, and again, this ties back into your mood board and to the keynote presentation and try to do everything, uh, put it in writing. So at least, you know, if you get confused with yourself, you know what you should kind of go back to and see what you've decided. That was that. You know where to find us. And if you have any questions, and I know this might need to sink in, that's fine. Cool. Guys, thank you so much.